That's good enough. Good morning. Good to have you all here this morning. Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran for all of our, all of our visitors, including, hey, my family's here. We are in the process of, we are still in the process of moving here to Wisconsin Rapids. Just about all of our earthly possessions are now here in town, in one place or another, or in the back of a U-Haul truck. And so it is uh, our, we want to thank everybody who helped yesterday over at Audrey Pruss's house in moving her out of her home and getting that. The family was really appreciative of the help uh, that was able to come and, and be there. And I was really appreciative of the people who came yesterday and helped us move stuff out of our U-Haul into a storage container so that we'd have enough room in the U-Haul for the stuff that's in our rental house. That was to prepare us for this Friday, which is the big move, and that's where we're going to need all hands on deck. So if anybody's willing to help us move into our new home, it is on Hunter's Ridge. It'll be about 5 o'clock, I'm thinking, is when we'll start moving people or moving stuff in. So uh, if you call the church office, let us know. You'd be willing to help out. We'll get you all the address and details. Otherwise, uh, Hunter's Ridge, 48th and Griffith area, uh, look for the U-Haul on the driveway. Uh, and people come, come and help out for however long you are able. There is an informational meeting that will be immediately after the service today. We had one already for in between services. We'll have another one after the service today. We invite and encourage you to be here a part of that, and that's preparing for the congregational vote that will be taking place on the 19th of June, Father's Day. Father's Day, so mark your calendars for that, but the information meeting is after this service and we'll have some handouts and some information to share with you there. Starting today, we are beginning a, a new order of worship, Divine Service Setting 4. It's not really new. It's been around for a while. And you guys were doing Divine Service Setting 4 uh, prior to uh, the vacancy. So we're reintroducing that Divine Service Setting. Things are a little bit different than what the service has been in the liturgy-wise. And so just be mindful of that as we go through the service today, and we'll get used to that again. Uh, it's on the worship screen, or you can follow along in the hymnal. With that in mind, we begin our worship with the singing of our invocation hymn. rise. 
We take our beginning this morning in remembrance of our baptism, making the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered here to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we, are, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for this day of Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 11. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its tops in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, 
and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do, and nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down, and there confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from, their, from over the face of the earth, and they left off the building of the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed, to over the face of, dispersed them over the face of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at the sound the multitude came together. And they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all the flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. We rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going, the, going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, 
But I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Together as God's people, we confess our faith to the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one, or Jesus Christ, begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Our memory verse for today Our memory verse for today is from John chapter 14, verse 26. I invite you to please say that with me. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. At this time, I invite our children to come forward for our children's message. So how many of you have studied in school a different language? Maybe you've started to learn, learn a different language. Maybe it's Spanish or French or German. How many of you have done that so far? A couple of you? A couple of you? You know what a, couple diff a different language, right? And how about any, uh, anybody out there, any world travelers out there that have had to learn a different language at a different time? Okay. All right. Not everybody in the world speaks English. In fact, many, there's many, many languages all throughout the world. Our Bible was written in, uh, in three different languages. It was written in Greek. That's the New Testament. And the Old Testament was written in both Hebrew and Aramaic. And it has been translated into so many different languages into the world so that people can hear and read the Word of God in their own language. Today is Pentecost. And it's, we celebrate in the Christian church the giving of the Holy Spirit. And God gave the disciples the ability at that, on that day to speak in many different languages as people were gathered there in the city from all around the world and they could hear the mighty works of God in their own native language. So I want to share with you, this is from the Greek New Testament. Let's see if you guys uh, recognize this. In our ke e halogos, kai a halogos, e pros ton theon, kai theos en halogos, hutas e en our ke pros ton theon. Sound familiar? No? Oh, well, let's see what it says here in the English. In the beginning was the Word, 
And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. That one, have you heard that before? Yeah. And so we've got different languages that are spoken all around the world. And all around the world, everybody needs to be able to hear the Word of God. They need to be able to hear that Jesus was sent to this earth by God in order to redeem them so that they could have the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. And we who hear that word of God here then are prepared to be God's witnesses in the world and to share that good news with, with others. And the Holy Spirit, who is our helper, helps to remind us of what we hear here or in Sunday school or in our Christian day school so that we can share the good news of Jesus Christ in the world. Let's take a moment and ask God to help us do that. Would you please repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for sending your Holy Spirit that helps us to remember all you taught us, especially about your son, Jesus, his love for us, and the salvation he won for us. In his name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you guys very much. You guys can head back to your seats and we'll sing our hymn of the day. please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy Pentecost! You know, after, after going through the season of Easter, it just felt like we needed to have something there. It was day, today is Pentecost and we start the season of Pentecost today. But it is a holiday that maybe you don't necessarily think about. And there's some holidays that you know just by the date, you'll know exactly what that holiday is. So here's a little bit of quiz. For all those kids that just got out of school, are like, quiz? Yeah, all right, you can do it. January 1st, what day is that? New Year's, that was an easy one. February 2nd, Groundhog's Day, February 14th. You know, I heard the ladies more on that. Men, you got to make sure you don't forget that one. March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Don't be fooled by this next one, April 1st. 
Oh, very good. May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. That's an easy one. It's right there. All right, now remember, you are in a Lutheran church. I'm setting you up here. October 31st. There you go. And right next to it, look at there on the calendar, November 1st. All Saints Day. All Saints Day. Now, it was, it was a reason that Martin Luther uh, you chose that day to nail the 95 theses to the, to the door on October 31st because he knew that people were going to be gathered there on All Saints Day. And by the way, he thinks it's cute that you pound on doors to get candy. <laughs> December 25th. Christmas. I don't know how many more shopping days there are. Now, those are dates that are set on a calendar, and they fall on that date every single year. And it might be on a different day of the week, but it falls on that date every single year. And then there are holidays that fall on a certain day, a specific day, but not on a specific date. Take, for example, here. We got Thanksgiving. We've got uh, Memorial Day, Labor Day, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Easter Easter is probably the most complex of all of those different holidays. Each one of them have a formula. They figure out how, some set of rule, how it's going to fall. But Easter is probably the most complex of those. However, Easter is actually the starting point for two additional holidays within the church year, and that is Ascension Day, which we celebrated a week ago this last Thursday. That happens on the 40th day after the resurrection of our Lord on Easter Sunday. And then today, Pentecost, which falls on the 50th day after Jesus rose from the dead, 50 days after Easter. And that's where we are at today. We're at the season of Pentecost. So what is Pentecost? What does it mean? Well, Pentecost literally means 50. And it is a Jewish holiday, a long-standing Jewish holiday that was celebrated long, long before Jesus ever walked this earth and certainly much longer before Jesus rose from the dead. It was celebrated by the Jews for the first time 50 days after they celebrated the Passover that led to their, their, the exodus from Egypt. And it was celebrated at the foot of Mount Sinai. And and it was the celebration now of the giving of the law. And that's how they celebrated. They still celebrate it to this day. And that explains, as we heard from our reading from Acts, why there are devout Jews that are from every nation gathered in Jerusalem for the celebration of Pentecost. It was a Jewish holiday long before it was a Christian holiday. But God in his wisdom chose on that day to send the Holy Spirit, the helper. And what an appearance he makes. Acts records the whole entire thing. As it says, devout Jews from every nation are gathered there in Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost and they hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind that fills the whole area, the whole city as hears this sound. And the disciples describe what, what appears to be tongues of fire, tongues of fire that come and rest upon them. And hearing all of this commotion and this sound, the Jews that are gathered there, they come to where the disciples are at and they hear, they hear the mighty works of God being proclaimed to them and they're hearing it in their own native language. They're hearing that. That's the power of the Hagios Pneumatos, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, who is the paraclete, the helper. Paraclete, not to be confused with a pair of cleats. Okay? The paraclete, which is the helper, that John talks about repeatedly through his gospel. It's the helper that, John, that Jesus is promising would come. And we hear about that in a couple different instances I want to point out today. First of all, we hear it in John chapter 7 as Jesus is celebrating with his disciples at the Feast of Booths. And then again in our reading for today as Jesus is celebrating the Passover with his disciples in John chapter 14. So let's take a look at those together. 
First of all, in John chapter 7, it says, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this was said about the Spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not yet been given, had not yet been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. And so we have this from John chapter 7. It talks about the giving of the Spirit. And then in, in 14, we say, These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So what is it that the Helper, the Holy Spirit, does? Well, as you see in verse 26, it brings to remembrance all that the Lord has taught us. At times when we are being, when we are discouraged, we are discouraged in the faith. When things are not going well, the Holy Spirit is there to comfort us and bring to remembrance that God is present there with us, that he loves us, that he cares for us, that he will never leave us or forsake us. The Holy Spirit brings to remembrance that. The Holy Spirit sometimes serves as our conscience, helping us choose right from wrong. And when we choose the wrong, which we oftentimes do, and we sin, the Holy Spirit brings to remembrance the law, the law which condemns us, which then drives us to repent and seek God's forgiveness. And then we are reminded of the forgiveness of sins that God has given to us, the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. It is the Holy Spirit, the, the helper, who gives us remembrance of all that God has done for us and the life, the forgiveness of sins, the life and the salvation that has been won for us upon the cross of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that gives us peace in this troubled world and peace for our troubled hearts as we await the day of Christ's return. So as we gather here in this place, we hear God's word proclaimed to us. It's the reason why we gather, so we can worship our Lord and hear God's word and be recharged and re-energized and rejuvenated so that we may go out of this place and be God's witnesses, his missionaries into our communities. And you need not worry about what you will say. Oftentimes that, that'll be the case. We'll worry, we'll, say, well, the Lord can't use me. Use somebody else. Somebody else will be a better person to speak. No, the Lord can use you and will use you at the right time and give you the right words to speak. So whether it is a, a friend or a coworker next door neighbor or another family member, whoever it may be. You need not fear what you will say in the moment that you need to say it. Because as Jesus says in verse 26, oh wait, I, I, I got ahead of myself. The helper, the Holy Spirit, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all I have said to you. So that is what the Holy Spirit does. In chapter 7, it also reminded us about how Jesus says that the word of God becomes like a spring of living water, right? And it brings to remembrance that spring of living water that flows out of us and, and reminds us of the eternal life. And it reminds me a little bit of the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. Remember the woman at the well? And it comes out of the hottest part of the day because she doesn't want to run into people. Who does she run into? Oh, the Savior of the world. And, she, and Jesus asks her to get, her a cup of get him a cup of water, which she does. But he says to her, if you knew who was asking you, you would have asked me for that water. You would have asked that, and I would have given you water that springs up to living water. Living water that leads to eternal life. That is what Jesus offers. And it's, Jesus is the only one who can offer this 
and the Holy Spirit helps bring to remembrance what Jesus offers. As I said, the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation, which is found in no one else but Jesus. The Holy Spirit is what brings to remembrance that. So as you leave this place, go out into the world and be his missionaries, his witnesses in your neighborhoods, in your community, in your workplaces, in your homes. And then come back here to be recharged and rejuvenated so that you can may go back out again. May God bless you and fill you with the Holy Spirit as you go on this journey. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and your minds in the one true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now with the prayers of the church. In our bidding prayers this week, we continue to remember Steve Jans, who has been hospitalized and continues to be hospitalized, but it is, is recovering, and we ask that that, uh, that happen, continue to happen. We pray for Kathy Rabin. This is a sister of Don Schillinger, uh, and ask that God's hand be upon her, healing hand be upon her. We also received word just yesterday that Judy Wiegan pass, passed away very suddenly. Uh, funeral arrangements are pending sometime this week, and so we'll, we'll have that information looking like possibly Thursday, but we're, uh, those are still pending. And so we, will, uh, we lift up the Wiegand family in our prayers uh, and, uh, and ask that God comfort them. We also remember in our prayers our, de- our uh, missionaries, Reverend Carlos and our deaconess, Danielle Schumann, and their work in the Dominican, Dominican Republic. Uh, as they uh, are spreading the word of God there. We remember our vicar, Jonah Schultz, and his wife, uh, wife Mary, as they are making their plans to transition here to Wisconsin Rapids later on this month and will be joining us uh, for the next year beginning in July. And we pray for the DCE, Joshua Gherkin, who has been extended the call by Emmanuel to, go serve, to come serve here at Emmanuel. And so we ask that you would continue to keep Josh in your prayers along with his wife, Rachel, as they discern where the Lord is leading them. Let us go to the Lord in prayer, and I invite you to please rise. If you notice in the, in the response today, it is a little bit different than how we have been doing it. After each petition, I'll say, let us pray to the Lord with the response, Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For gladness, for, for gladness in the Holy Spirit, who brought, who through his church fills the world with the remembrance of everything Christ Jesus has spoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that by the same spirit of peace, our hearts would neither be troubled nor afraid. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the sharing of the gospel, that God, who chose the apostles first to proclaim the resurrection of Jesus, would open the mouths of his pastors and people to proclaim Christ crucified and raised again. We especially remember in our prayers also the work of Reverend Carlos and Deaconess Danelle Schumann as they bring the word of the Lord that proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to the people of the Dominican Republic. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have mocked, who are mocked for believing and confessing the truth of God's word, that he would sustain their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. For all parents, that God would continue to pour out his spirit upon them to catechize their children faithfully in his word. Let us pray to the Lord. For our leaders, especially our president, governor, Congress, legislature, and all judges and magistrates, that they would be given a relentless pursuit of just laws for the common good of all with a heart of mercy for the weak and the vulnerable. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and the suffering, especially we pray for Steve and Kathy. And we pray that the Lord would give them confidence in his care and provision, grant them healing according to his will, and give them endurance to the day of his coming when all their affliction will end. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who grieve and mourn the loss of loved ones, especially for the family of Judy Wiegand. 
We pray, Lord, that you would comfort them in the midst of their sorrows and that you would bring to remembrance, Lord, the, the everlasting hope and promise of eternal life as they await the reunion of all the dead in the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. For the workers that we have called, for, D, for our DCE, uh, Joshua Gurkin, as he faithfully deliberates and discerns your will, Lord, on the call that we have extended to him, we pray that you would give him wisdom and guidance in his discernment. And also for our vicar, Jonah Schultz, as he and his wife and family make preparations to move here to Wisconsin Rapids, that you would bless them in the days ahead as they make that transition but also that you would bless the ministry that they will do here. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For preparation to faithfully receive Christ's body and blood at his table, that we may be nourished and strengthened to receive his gifts for our good and for the flowering in our lives of his holiness and righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty, with your Son, Jesus Christ, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts through your word to rule and govern us according to your will. Comfort us in every temptation and misfortune and defend us against every error that we may continue steadfast in the faith, increase in love and good works, and trusting firmly in your grace for us by his death. Obtain eternal salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I invite everyone to please uh, take that friendship register and fill that out if you haven't already done so. Pass it on down and take a moment to share the peace of the Lord as our offerings are brought forward. Continue now with the service of the sacrament, and once again, I invite you to please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and everlasting God for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Taught by our Savior and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
our Lord Jesus Christ on the night in which he was betrayed. He took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which has been given for you. This do as often as you eat of it in remembrance of me. And in the same way also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart now in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us in the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Now our worship has ended. Let our service begin. Go with the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. Am I on? Am I on now? Yes, my button is pushed. Okay, here we go. Um, just, a, just a few announcements, and then uh, we'll have the information meeting following this. Um, as we all know that we, uh, we've, we've uh, put out a call for a DCE, I just wanted to let everybody know what we've been doing over the past couple of months um, when, it, when it comes to staff. Um, when you think back to, to pastor, uh, senior pastor call, since then we've, uh, so we've, 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 uh, we've made a call to a senior pastor, we've called a vicar, we've, we've put out offerings for two teachers that have, that have accepted, we have a um, call out to a new DCE, and we have another call out for another teacher. So, so we're, we're keeping busy when it comes down to being fully staffed 
And, and I just want to say that that's been ongoing and, uh, and we're working through all that. Other strategic planning things. Um, as a board, we just went through the, the five elements of our strategic plan um, this past couple of weeks. We, we will give everybody an update on where we are with those. We'll give everybody an update on what's happened over the last six months. We are closing out our fiscal year, so we are also closing out the first six months of that um, strategic plan. And we are putting together next year's plan for the strategic goals for the next year. I'll be talking about those later this summer. A quick update on the building. Um, we've gone through a whole bunch of, uh, I'll, I'll say, open sessions, discussion items, and, and the results are in from those. And um, they are on the green sheets that you either can pick up as you walk out, or we'll talk a little bit more about them during our informational meetings. Um, all I'll say is that we, this is input from 140 members, 140 plus members. And, and it's really going to be what we do and, and, and what we look at for doing the next steps towards a new building and what we do with the land out at Home Depot. Uh, pretty exciting. A lot of different ideas have been, been shared and a lot of different thoughts are going on there. So that's supposed to be coming up as well during, by the end of the summer. So even though it's summertime, everybody's starting to enjoy summer. Uh, the board and all our committees are still working pretty hard to, uh, to fulfill some things going on there. So just that. After this, uh, after the everybody that wants to leave can leave, we'll be talking about the budget. We'll be talking about the board and the elder positions, and then we'll also be going through uh, a bylaw change that we want to discuss with everybody as well. So, for those of you that can't stay, um, please pick up. There is a uh, and 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 for you young boys, mainly boys that are colorblind, I'll let you guys know this this is tough. Okay. So they give me mine. It says brown, gold, and green. They're all in the back for you to pick up as you leave. So pick up all three different colors, and uh, we'll be discussing uh, with our information meetings as we do it. So thank you very much, and please stay if you can.